Hey there guys, are uh -huh. two CMC or Mana Value rocks problematic in EDH? That's what we're discussing here today. Alrighty, so yes, we're discussing whether those two CMC or Mana Value Mana rocks are problematic for EDH. This was coming from a question from one of our Discord server users, Brad. Uh, I did sort of answer him on the Discord, but I thought that this was a sort of interesting conversation to kind of have with you guys, so I thought I'd bring it to you guys as well. Uh, basically, the answer is, well, no. Well, uh, there we go. That's it. Uh, wrap it up, guys. Uh, roll the credits uh, and so on. And, uh, yeah, I'll see. No, definitely not. Don't, don't click off the video just yet. Because obviously you guys don't just want me to say yes or no or whatever. You want me to explain, in a sense, why that is and, you know, how it all works and whatnot and all that sort of stuff, to a degree at least. Um, why aren't these manor ops such a big issue or, or why, why would somebody think that they're an issue? I think it's one of those things because, again, there are more, well, they started to become more and more prevalent and more and more sort of stapley i suppose of a lot more decks and whatnot so that shift in meta of like or a little bit of that shift in the meta of more of these cheap efficient good mana rocks being printed uh, and whatnot is one of those things where yeah some play groups might be like well hmm, we've never seen the likes of this but one of those one of the things is that people would dictate that as quote-unquote fast mana. And it's definitely not fast mana. Now, hot take for a hot second here, and I know some people aren't going to agree with me on this either. And you can let me know that as well in the comments down below, among other things that I'll say later on. But I think Soul Ring is fast mana. Okay? It, it, we all know what the other fast mana rocks are, but definitely I think Soul Ring fits into being fast mana as well. So I'm going to say that it counts as a fast mana rock. It's all of this fast mana, um, so your moxes, your zero mana artifacts, your one mana artifacts that tap for two or three, or your zero mana artifacts that tap for two, things like this. All the things that basically are Cheerio-like in a sense, um, in the sense of Cheerios, the Cheerios is they draw you one card in that sense. But in this sense, I'm saying in terms of mana, so in terms of like it gets you one mana or more for zero mana or basically one mana or what have you. So those are what I would consider fast mana rocks and whatnot. Things that basically cost you nothing but yet you can net mana out of. Now, I know everyone always complains about how green ramps, but green really ramps fairly in a sense. You know, green's ramp is fair ramp. It's mostly two or three mana. I know there are some four ones and whatnot, but there's no one mana green ramp spells. Maybe there's one, but it's not, it's not really one all the time. It's usually three that in Search for Tomorrow. Um, so, and there's definitely no zero mana green ramp spells uh, and whatnot. So again, I, I think the people's perspective on how green ramps it is different to the other colors, it is different, but it's doing essentially the same thing. It's, you know, paying two mana to get a mana rock, essentially. But that mana rock comes in the form of one of their lands. And I've got a video going into more depth about this coming out soon, so you'll see that uh, down the track and whatnot, uh, talking more about specifically Green's Mana Ramp and whatnot and all of that. But I'm not going to discuss that too much here. I'm discussing, you know, you know how fast Mana does affect uh, the format and how problematic it is and whatnot and all of that sort of stuff. Now, again, this is purely speculative, oh, well, sort of speculative, I guess, on what part of the format you're playing. Now, if you're playing CDH, of course, it's completely different. Throw everything I'm saying out the window uh, when it comes to that format, and that's the problem. Again, this is where the communication breakdown is happening. People don't come to games enough and say, hey, look, I want to play a CDH game, or I'm playing a 
you know, very high powered deck or I'm playing a deck with a lot of, you know, fast mana and things like this and whatnot, it might be not, uh, you know, a 100% top tier deck, but it's trying to be, you know, as top tier as possible and I'm still testing it out and whatnot because I don't 100% want to look at Steve's list or Alan's list or whatever. Things like this, but I know what's good, roughly speaking, for the most part, and, you know, I'm trying to do those sorts of powerful, you know, things and whatnot. So, again, it's one of those things where, you know, it, it, you know, we've got to have that conversation more. And, you know, it's fine for people to want to play CDH. You can go ahead and play CDH if that's what you want to play. You know, it's not my prerogative to tell you that you can't play it's my prerogative to say that's not what i want to play if you don't want to play with me and steve and alan or who and whoever else and emily or whatever who are sitting here playing our you know sixes and sevens and maybe eights at the most in terms of power level um because that's not what you're looking for then that's fine we'll just play a three player game you know it's no skin off of our backs. But if you are sitting there bored off your brains or whatever and you say, all right, I want to play, you know, I want to get a game in at least, um, you know, just remember, hey, while well, all of these other play people that you're playing with are playing with much less powerful decks than what you are. So unless you're, like, going to say, can I borrow a deck or... You know, uh, you know, whatever. I'm definitely arch enemy. Just target me all the time, um, and whatnot. Unless you're okay with some of those things, then it's like, well, you know, why bother to a degree? Because again, like, it's not going to be the game unless you've got a deck that fits that. Again, it's not going to be the game that you want when you're going into those games, and it's not going to be the game that those people are going to want. So. That's the, that is the main problem in that sense. We don't know going into a game sometime that, you know, Jared or Jason or Alex or, you know, whoever it is, Emily, whoever is going to, you know, suddenly drop half of their hand in fast mana rocks on turn one or whatever. And, and, be like, and the rest of the table is going to be like, well, shit. We know who the target is, boys, but now what do we do, you know? Can we can we survive this or, or are we all just sort of dead? You know, it it is the mana rocks themselves in a sense as well that cause this issue, but it is Wizards of the Coast's design of those mana rocks. And yes, to a degree, as again, same in saying that it is the Rules Committee and whatnot saying you know, sitting back and going, well, we don't want to ban every single mana rock. We want players who want to play high-powered, play their high-powered game. And this is another one of those times where I want to interject that argument of saying, well, perhaps, again, we should have separate ban lists for regular EDH and CDH because they're really two different formats anyway to start with. So why not just let the CDH players have their own ban list and let the regular EDH players have their own ban list as well? Because the things that you'll ban, again, and I sort of said this in another video somewhere as well, the things that you're going to ban for CDH often will have zero impact in uh, regular EDH for the most part. Yes, if these things were legal in, in regular EDH, they would be problematic. But for the most part, the things that you're going to ban for regular EDH towards CDH, you probably wouldn't ban anything to, to that extent. But again, you know, why would somebody play Coalition Victory in CDH like, or something like that? Like, just take that for an example. Like, that's a do-nothing card in CDH. It's way too much mana. It's too unreliable, all of this other stuff. You can just, like, win much easier and much quicker and much more effectively in in any sort of deck without that sort of a card so plus it can be interacted with so easily in cdh things like that so again a card like that would not you know really see any play banning it for regular eh if you think that's 
happens to be the case that perhaps it's too powerful or it's too good or whatever. It comes out of nowhere too much or whatever. I don't think it does, to be honest, but that's my own personal opinion on it. But again, if you think that that is the way that things should go, that people shouldn't have access to a card like this, um, you know, whatnot, in regular games of EDH, then okay, sure, you know, ban it. But again, that's where I'm saying in, like, regular EDH, a lot of these, like, really powerful mana rocks, like, again, most players won't have the budget or the means by which to get them. And even if they get maybe one or two, how good is that for their actual deck? Not very good. Like, again, like, I could put Jeweled Lotus into my Squirrel deck. Like, it wouldn't do anything, really. Maybe it would do something. Maybe it get let me get my commander out on turn one or two or whatever here and there every now and again, but then what? Like, <laughs> like yes, again, that deck does have things in it that m can make it really good and can make it win the game very easily and has combos, but all those combos are towards, you know, combat damage-related win conditions. So... Again, just getting the commander out on turn one, yes, that can be good, but again, um, yeah, sure, you will have a lot of other things in your hand and you will be able to get those things out much now much easier since your commander's out and be able to start paying off the cards that you have that make squirrels or make tokens and whatnot and things like that. But again, a card like that really won't do enough. Like, to me, it won't do enough. Like... Yeah, sure, every now and again I'll get it, get my commander out, but then, you know, like, when I draw it, you know, and I've already got my commander out, it's like, well, now I've got this mana rock that basically does nothing, you know. So, unless it's very consistent to a degree, like, I don't see it, like, in that regard, like, and I know some people would completely disagree with that too. They don't, like, how can you not see how useful that is to have it, you know, so, yeah, but it's only sometimes, it's only very rarely that I'll get it out and get my commander on turn one or whatever. So is that that useful for me or what else could I follow it up with? It's not just, well, here's my commander, go. <laughs> you know, like that would be what it would be for the most part. Or here's my commander in the land, go. You know, like for the most part. So again, like fast mana can be really good to a sense, like, oh, yes, I've got my commander out and I've got, you know, one mana open, but what can I do with that one mana? Probably very little, if anything. And then, again, like, it's just a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, wow, <laughs> you know, how dangerous. It is parallel lives on a stick, and, yes, it does have that sack ability or whatever, but, again, when, I'm look when you're thinking about it, it's just not that good. Like, it, my command really doesn't do that much in comparison to something like Turgrid or something like that. That's just like, okay, I got my commander out on turn two or whatever. Now I, you know, Dark Ritual or something else, and then I wheel everyone or whatever and do all this, and then I basically win the game. It's like, yeah, sure, I've got my commander out, and I might get two extra squirrels from make or one extra squirrel from making any squirrel or whatever or from making any token but still like that's a very slow start in a sense so it doesn't really matter that i've got off to such a quote-unquote fast start in that sense because my deck is still slow in doing what it's doing it's not a fast deck so there are decks that take advantage of these fast mana rocks and whatnot much more effectively than certain decks my deck is a like a, most of my decks are slow decks but that's what i mean if i get my deck that's a slow deck all of this fast mana it really doesn't do that much for it because it's not set up or it doesn't do the things that you know you would suspect that it sort of does or whatever that you would think oh wow you just play something blah 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 and then you win the game somehow yeah sure you can find those cards but again you actually need a lot of time to actually set up a lot of stuff and whatnot. And, you know, realistically, you need to find them again. And there's not a lot of tutors for that, for that deck. Or there is, but I just don't run them. So, again, it depends on what the deck is and what the deck's doing. Yeah, sure, I could run all that fast mana into that deck, but then what? <laughs> again, it's just, 
it doesn't seem to like fit with what the deck's doing. The deck is fun and janky and silly, and sometimes it will go go off and do its sort of do its own thing. But again, like sometimes it will just do nothing and miss its fifth land drop or whatever um, for six or seven turns and whatnot. So, <laughs> and I'll be sitting there discarding cards and whatnot. So, again, you know, it's very hit and miss sort of thing, you know. And just putting in all of these fast mana rocks really wouldn't do anything for it. So, yes, fast mana rocks can be problematic. But it's also the decks that they go in, you know, that make them more problematic. If you have things that are out there, like Turgot, that just basically win the game after they're cast, you know, then obviously those commanders, those decks that are very centric on, okay, here's this other one card that works really well with my commander. Oh, look, I just win. You know, that has 99 other... Well, basically 97 other copies of it in the deck or whatever, you know, whatnot, things like that. So there's a lot of other copies of that card for the most part, or even if there isn't, there's a bunch of tutors to get those copies of those cards that work really well with it and just, like, go off. So, yeah, again, it's those decks that, you know, abuse them and, you know, really use those mana rocks and whatnot um, and can take a real advantage of them and get so far ahead so quickly that the game will be over for regular players who are just like, well, I guess I play my second land. I don't know. Turgrid's already out, so does it even matter? Because even if it's on my field, maybe it'll be sacrificed or destroyed or something else somehow, blah, blah, blah. And even if I have two mana, yes, I'll have no hand, so... Yay, then I'll be cooking with gas. Woo. You know, like, that's what I mean. Like, there's a complete difference between, like, me playing my commander, which will make squirrels if I make tokens or whatnot, or a commander like, I don't know, Golas or something. I don't think Golas would work. But again, because Golas is better, but still, like, uh, let's think, Urza. Like, things like that, again, like, I have a construct and I have my commander. Yes, yeah, sure, but, again, you have so many other artifacts in that deck. By the time that we turn around again to, to try to deal with what you're doing, you're just going to be activating Urza and activating Urza and, <laughs> and activating and activating. So getting that, you know, payoff on top of the you know, enabler and whatnot is much more powerful again. So you're able to get much more advantage out of getting that thing out there much earlier than everyone else and whatnot. So again, there is that, you know, decks that take much more advantage of it versus decks that don't really take advantage of that sort of thing. So I guess that's pretty much it, really it this time uh, for me to discuss here on this one um so you guys can let me know what you think do you think that uh the fast mana rocks are a problem in regular games in edh how can we solve this issue is it by having more conversations before we you know shuffle up to play and say hey by the way you know i'm playing you know all this fast mana my deck's probably pretty good i haven't played tested or whatever maybe or whatever all this other stuff whatnot but I know I've got all this stuff, so I know my deck's really good. So therefore, you know, hey, let's let's just get that out of the way and say, hey, bring some decks that are pretty strong because otherwise you might just not have a good time. That's just one of those things. Like, we might need to start doing that a bit more and realising, hey, there are different players out there and they have every right to play the decks the way that they want to play them. We might not like it, but they have the right to play those decks if that's the way that they want to play them. You know, again, I don't always like it or whatnot, but it's your own prerogative. I can't tell you your favourite flavour of ice cream and you can't tell me mine. So, you know, again, if that's the way that you want to play, just will be as polite as possible and say, please join another game sometimes um, or whatnot. Go join other people that actually want to play that way uh, and don't bother us over here who are just playing slow, stompy, battle cruiser style 
decks and whatnot. Maybe some of our topper decks have some, you know, combo, but again, mostly they're combat-based damage um, resolution uh, decks that need that to win. So anyway, as I said, hope you will leave me your thoughts down there in those comments below. I'll be sure to try to respond to all your comments. Really do love interacting with you guys and talking about EDH and all the geeky things that we love. So yeah, I'll see you down there in those comments below or I'll see you in the next one. Hey, you've just finished watching one of our videos. A bunch of other videos are popping up on your screen now for you to check out. So why not check them out?